Hi students, welcome to exercise 28, application of logarithmic functions. Alright, so where do logs exist in everyday life, or the world of mathematics? Well, here's a good example. Um, the Richter magnitude, so the Richter scale um, that you guys know of, so when you hear of an earthquake being like a 3.5 or a 7.2, things like that, it's actually a logarithmic scale. So the Richter magnitude m, so the value you know as the 8.5, is of an earthquake is defined by this formula, log of A, where A is the amplitude of the ground motion, and then A naught is the amplitude associated with standard earthquake. Uh, and when we say standard earthquake, is just the, the normal movement of the earth. All right. In 1946, in, in Gwaii, British Columbia, an earthquake with an amplitude measuring 10 to the power of 77 times the normal earth movement struck. So that means the Earth moved this much more than the average. Determine the magnitude of this earthquake on the Richter scale. So simply, we have here, m is equal to log of 10 to the power of 7.7 .7 times a naught of a naught. So notice what's going to happen to a naught here. It's just going to cancel itself out. Okay. So what we have is m equals to log of 10 to the power of 7.7. .7. Well. If you guys remember uh, log rules, you can take the exponent of the argument and bring it up front. So m is equal to 7.7 .7 log 10 here. And notice this is a log base 10. And we know that if it's log 10, the value of this is 1. So this is 1. So we can say m is equal to 7.7. .7. So this would be a description of an earthquake with a magnitude 7.7. .7. And how we describe that is that the Earth is moving 10 to the power of 7.7 .7 times more than the average movement of the Earth. All right, so the strongest earth recorded earthquake in Hawaii, Guaidi, was in 1949, had a magnitude of 8.1 on a Richter scale. So now I'd like to know how, many, how much time stronger is this earthquake compared to the one in 1946. All right. So basically what I want to do is I want to calculate uh, the amplitude of both and find out how much more uh, it is. Because it's not comparing 8.1 and 7.7. .7. Um, that's, you're comparing the, the amplitude of both. Okay. All right, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, well, we know by looking at this question that uh, the magnitude of an 8.1, the amplitude of an 8.1 would be 10 to the power of 8.1. Okay, and the amplitude of a 7.7, .7, that would be 10 to the power of 7.7. .7. All right, so by finding out how much bigger this is compared to that, this will give us the ratio of how much stronger the 8.1 would be compared to the 7.7. .7. And if you plug that into your calculator, I believe you get 2.5. I'm going to round to the one decimal here. So this means that uh, the... <laughs> the magnitude 8.1 uh, earthquake is 2.5 times stronger than the 7.5 magnitude earthquake. Okay, so again, simply dividing 10 to the power of 8.1, 1, 1, which would have been the amplitude of that one, divided by the amplitude of the other. In this next, in this next example, we have uh, a, another log different log function. Uh, it's actually used to calculate the pH scale. And the pH scale is measured using this formula. So pH is defined as pH equals to negative log H uh, plus, where H plus is the concentration of hydrogen ions measured in moles per liter. Okay, so this is another uh, one where you might have seen chemistry. So a neutral solution such as pure water is considered as a pH of 7. That's how it measures. The closer the solution is 0, the more acidic the solution is. The closer the solution is 14, uh, the more alkaline the solution. So that's the two ends of the scale. All right, so a Coca-Cola drink has a pH of 2.2, sorry, 2.5, whereas milk has a pH of 6.6. .6. How many times more acidic as milk is the cola we drink? Okay, so the acidity will be measured in terms of, well, the H+. Okay, and, and we have to compare both 
um, both concentrations of hydrogen ions to determine how acidic it is. All right, so let's do the two. So let's go with uh, milk, or sorry, let's go to cola first. So for cola, let's calculate the uh, concentration of hydrogen ions. So we'd have 2.5 equals to negative log of H+, plus, which is our concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, so now I need to solve for this H here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by negative both sides. And then, notice that to get rid of this log function, I want to solve for H+. plus. We're going to put this in exponential form. So I'm going to have 10 to the power of negative 2.5 equals to H. Okay, so that is the concentration of hydrogen ions uh, in moles per liter for the cola. And now we'll do milk. Okay, so the exact same thing we're going to do, we're going to go 6.6 .6 equals to negative log H, divide by negative each side. And then we put it to exponential form. All right, so now we've got both. And to compare the two, we're just going to divide them. Okay, so obviously this is more acidic than this. This is actually a larger number if you think about it. So to calculate this, we're going to go 10 to the power of negative 2.5 divided by 10 to the power of negative 6.6. .6. Again, put, plug that into your calculator. And you get 12,589. So, again... This means, therefore, uh, cola is 12,589 times more acidic than, uh, than milk, which is quite incredible when you think about it. All right, next one. An apple is five times as, as, as acidic as a pear. If a pear has a pH of 3.8, determine the pH of an apple. Okay, well, what we have, um, we know that we can calculate the, uh, the hydrogen of a pear, the, the concentration of hydrogen ions. So let's do that first. So for a pear, we have 3.8 equals to negative log of H. Okay, so we're going to solve for H+. Plus. So divide by negative each side first, and then exponential form. Okay, so that is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a pair. So since an apple is five times as acidic as a pair, so for the apple, we have that the H is equal to five times this. Okay, and now we can plug that into our formula to get our pH is equal to negative log of 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3.8. Okay, so again, use your calculator. And we plug all that in, and we get our pH is equal to, usually we round it to one decimal spot, 3.1. So again, a 5 times more acidic means a pH of 3.8, uh, sorry, 3.1 compared to 3.8. In this last example, we're going to look at a log scale that's uh, run, or giving us values of the sound intensity. So the decibels. So if you ever hear, uh, for example, if you go to a concert, if you go to, um, if you go to a jet engine, you've probably heard those things. There's, the sound is defined in decibels. Well, this is actually a logarithmic equation that provides the decibels. So decibels are is equal to 10 log of I over I naught, so very similar to the um, a magnitude question for earthquakes, where I is the intensity of the sound, measured in watts per square meter, and I naught is the base of threshold of hearing. So you're, you're trying to do the fraction of the ratio as how much louder is that compared to the norm. All right, so it's recommended a person wears protective gear when the sound is 85 or greater. So MTS center measures 110 decibels when the jets score a goal. How many times louder is the MTS center compared to the max recommended maximum sound intensity? Okay, well here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to compare the intensity of sound. I'd like to know what is the sound intensity compared to the other. So I need to find that sound intensity. So let's start with the norm first. Okay, so norm. 
All right, so the norm in this one would be 85 equals to 10 log of i over i naught. Okay, so I'm going to solve for i over i naught. That's the value I want to compare. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 10 on both sides. And now, to solve for i over i naught, what I need to do is put it in exponential form. So base 10 to the power of 8.5 equals to our ratio. So 10 to the power of 8.5 equals to i over i naught. Okay, so that's the intensity of the sound, the ratio of intensity of the sound compared to the norm of, um, or sorry, compared to minimum of the norm. Okay, so now let's do the other one. Let's do the MTS center. So the MTS center is going to follow the exact same equation. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 10 both sides. Okay, and then exponential form. All right, so now what I got to do, I just have to compare the ratio of the MTS compared to the ratio of the norm. So all I'm going to do is do 10 to the power 11 divided by 10 to the power of 85. Okay, and you plug that into your calculator. Um, and you get... Three hundred and sixteen. So, this means that the NTS center is three hundred and sixty sixteen. Sorry, times louder than recommended. So, as you can tell, quite a bit loud compared to the, what we should be listening to or hearing. All right, and B, a little bit different here. The truck emits a sound. So we've actually measured the sound intensity of a certain truck. It is at 0 0.001 watts per meter squared. I'd like to determine the decibel level. So again, looking back at our formula, we have decibel level equals to 10 log of I, which is the measured, the, the compared to the uh, constant of sound, which is, in our case, the minimum sound you can hear. Okay, so this fraction, and I gave you guys a value, it's in their page if you guys look at it. Um, so now we have 10 log i, i which is 0 0.001, divided by 10 to the power of negative 12. Okay, so that 10 to the power of negative 12 is that constant that I gave you guys in the, in the question. And all you need now is your calculator. So you plug all this in, and what you're going to come up with is 90 decibels. So that is the sound intensity measure of the truck. Okay guys, I hope most of that made sense and we'll see each other in class.